Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on inflammation and angiogenesis. In this video, what we're going to talk about is selectins. Okay, so uh, I'm going to give uh, the background, so I'm going to talk about uh, cell adhesion molecules in general. We'll then see how uh, selectins are a specific example of cell adhesion molecules, and we'll then see the three examples that are known of selectins. Okay, and what their function in the body is, specifically looking at their involvement in uh, immunology. Okay, right, so, um, cell adhesion molecules then. So, cell adhesion molecules, or CAMs for short, are integral membrane proteins which cells have inserted into their phospholipid bilayer, and they can attach either to other cell adhesion molecules on other cells, okay, so you can form a cell-cell interaction, or they can attach uh, onto components of the uh, extracellular matrix, i.e. you'll have a cell-extracellular uh, matrix connection. Okay, so cell adhesion molecules are often abbreviated to CAMs for short. Okay, right, so let me show you. Um, very crudely, uh, the cell adhesion molecules. So here is a cell. Okay, this uh, line represents the cell membrane, and inserted into the cell membrane, it can have a cell adhesion molecule. So let's say that this rectangle here represents a cell adhesion molecule, and let's call this cell 1. Okay, and uh, then we can have another cell here. Let's put its cell membrane here. Okay, and again, we can have another cell adhesion molecule inserted into the membrane of this second cell here. Okay, so let's call this cell 2. So this now is a cell-cell interaction. Okay, and the two cells are being held together by the fact that their cell adhesion molecules are uh, attached to one another. Okay, now, uh, basically these cell-cell adhesion molecules, um, well, these cell adhesion molecules, they um, don't necessarily have to be the same type, okay? So, basically, it, it could be the case that both cell 1 and cell 2 express the exact same cell adhesion molecule, and that these two cell adhesion molecules are binding together, okay? So, i.e., this cell adhesion molecule on cell 1 is exactly the same protein as the cell adhesion molecule on cell 2. And I want to stress there are absolutely hundreds of cell adhesion molecules, different proteins that are all grouped together as being cell adhesion molecules. However, if both cells are using the exact same cell adhesion molecule uh, in this cell adhesion molecule complex here, then that's what is known as homophilic binding, okay? So homo means uh, the same, okay? So this is homophilic binding, when uh, both of the cell adhesion molecules that are involved in the bond between cell 1 and cell 2 are exactly the same. If, on the other hand, uh, the adhesion molecule of cell 1 was different from the adhesion mo cell adhesion molecule on uh, cell 2, then that would be what is known as heterophilic binding. So if they are not the identical protein, then um, it would be known as heterophilic binding. Hetero means different. Okay, so uh, you can have homophilic binding and heterophilic binding, depending on whether the cell adhesion molecule on cell 1 is the same as the cell adhesion molecule on cell 2. Okay, and we'll come back to this in a moment. Right then there is the possibility that the cell is instead forming a bond with um, the extracellular matrix rather than uh, another cell. So here is our cell, and now it's going to have a cell adhesion molecule here on its surface, which I will colour in in blue again. And the cell adhesion molecule won't be binding to another cell adhesion molecule, instead it's going to be binding to components of the extracellular matrix. Now what is the extracellular matrix made up of? Well the extracellular matrix is a huge great spider's web is the way I would encourage you to think of it. Okay, so you might think of the interstitial fluid, which is the uh, fluid between cells, okay, so it's the extracellular fluid. 
you might think of that as just being like this gloop through which cells can sort of move and bathe, but in actual fact, cells cannot move around. And the reason is that within the interstitial fluid, there is a very, very dense meshwork of fibres, okay? And this is just containing this cell exactly where it is, okay? Now, these fibres mainly consist of collagen, and also polysaccharides, uh, a notable polysaccharide would be heparan sulfate. Okay, so if we were to actually draw a picture of the extracellular matrix, you know, we'd have fibres all over the place, basically. Maybe here, let's say, say these green fibres here, these represent collagen fibres. Okay, let's let uh, purple fibres represent certain polysaccharide fibres, okay? So you're forming this meshwork. And, as I said, a major polysaccharide that uh, is used in the extracellular matrix uh, is heparan sulfate. Okay, so let me just put that down. Heparan sulfate. Okay. Um, then, uh, you also have collagens. And now, there are many different types of collagen. Nearly all of them are involved in the extracellular matrix. So, collagen fibres, heparan sulfate. Uh, fibres, these form a meshwork. Imagine a very dense spider's web surrounding all the cells and keeping them in their exact position simply because they're contained by this dense, thick spider's web. Okay, and the extracellular matrix is often abbreviated to ECM for short. Now, uh, certain uh, cell adhesion molecules will bind to components of uh, the extracellular matrix. Now, Certain cell adhesion molecules can bind to collagen. Uh, often, though, they bind to another protein that's uh, bound off the collagen. So let me put a collagen fibre here. Okay, so here in green, this is a collagen fibre. Often, instead of binding directly to the collagen, they bind to a little protein dimer that's attached to the collagen. Okay, and this little protein dimer that's attached to the collagen is what's known as fibronectin. Okay, so fibronectin is a dimer of two fibronectin proteins, but everyone doesn't, no one would ever say this is a fibronectin dimer, they would just call it fibronectin because fibronectin always exists as this dimer. Okay, that it turns out to be two fibronectin proteins stuck together, um, you know. Never mind. It, it, the dimer is what's known as fibronectin. Okay, and fibronectin will bind to the collagen on one side and then to uh, the cell adhesion molecule on the other. And that's often how you get uh, links between uh, cells and the extracellular matrix. Okay, so this is a cell ECM interaction. ECM being short for extracellular matrix. Okay, now all cell ECM interactions are also considered as heterophilic binding. So either you can be homophilic binding, where um, the two cell adhesion molecules uh, between um, the cells are exactly the same protein, or you can be heterophilic binding, which means either the two cell adhesion molecules between uh, two cells are not the identical protein, or uh, you've got a cell adhesion molecule attaching to a component of the uh, extracellular matrix. Okay, now, uh, there are a huge number of cell adhesion molecules, and to help us try and understand uh, the number of cell adhesion molecules, we group them into families. So there are four main families of cell adhesion molecules. Okay, so we'll start with the uh, first one, which is the immunoglobulin. This is the one with the biggest uh, name. So the immunoglobulin superfamily cell adhesion molecules. Okay, so this contains uh, things like ICAM1, VCAM1, PCAM1. Okay, so it's got a number of quite famous examples within it. Okay, so immunoglobulin superfamily cell adhesion molecules. Now, uh, we're not interested in these. We are looking at selectins. So these are not selectins. The selectins is one of the families of cell adhesion molecules. Now, because immunoglobulin superfamily cell adhesion molecules is a mouthful, this is often abbreviated to I and then little g for immunoglobulin, SF for superfamily, and then there's a separate word, CAMS 
for cell adhesion molecules. Okay, so this is family one. Now let's, um, I think I might even box it. Okay, so here's family one, the immunoglobulin superfamily cell adhesion molecules. Now let's talk about uh, another family. Okay, so family two then. Family two has a much shorter name. It's the family of integrins. Okay, and we did a video on the integrins. So uh, this includes um, mo well molecules such as LFA1, lymphocyte function associated antigen 1, uh, VLA4, very late antigen 4, and also you have a number of um, integrins which are involved in connecting cells to extracellular matrix components, um, and also integrins which are involved in connecting um, cells, particularly epithelial cells, to basement membranes. Now, basement membranes count as extracellular matrix, um, but we studied them in separate um, context uh, in that video. Okay, so integrins as family 2, 3, is then this family of selectins, the star of the show. Okay, um, so the selectin family uh, actually only has three members, which we will look at in the next video. Okay, but before we end this video, let's just look at the final family. So the fourth family is the family of cadherins. Okay. And we're not going to look at the cadherins, not in this playlist anyway, because they're not uh, ghastly important for immunology. All of these three have examples which are very important in immunology. Okay, so selectins, P-selectin, E-selectin, and L-selectin, which are the three examples of selectins. Uh, those are very important in immunology. Integrins, LFA1, VLA4, very important in immunology. Immunoglobulin superfamily cell adhesion molecules, ICAM1, VCAM1, very important in immunology. Okay, so in the next video we'll look at the three different examples of selectins and what they do.